The first thing you need to do is to create a new test user account in your environment that will be used by Remote Desktop Canary to automatically connect to your terminal servers. If you're running a full RDS deployment in a domain, this should simply be a user account that you place in the Remote Desktop Users group in the domain. Or, if you're wanting Remote Desktop Canary to test connections to standalone terminal servers, it can be a local user account on a computer that is also in the Remote Desktop Users group. If you're wanting to test connections into a full RDS collection, the easiest thing to do is to log on to your web access server and save an RDP file that has the connection parameters for the RDS collection you want to test. Next, you need to determine whether or not you want to limit your testing so that it's local only, meaning the test only hits the connection broker and then the session host. Or if you want to also test the gateway server, if you have a remote desktop gateway deployed, in the latter configuration, which we'll see in a moment, you need to deploy Remote Desktop Canary to a system or virtual machine outside your internal network. Installing our software on a virtual machine running in Azure or AWS is a perfect location from which to do external testing that hits your gateway first. Whether you choose local only testing or external testing through the gateway, Click the Add Workflow button to define a testing workflow. Give the workflow a name and then click the Auto Import My Settings from RDP File button. Remote Desktop Canary will automatically configure most of the workflow parameters for you. If you're doing local only testing, remove the gateway if it's included. Then supply the domain, username, and password for your test account you created at the beginning. In the synthetic login test settings, enter the test frequency, the email addresses you want to receive testing notifications at, and also the threshold in seconds that determines whether or not you receive an alert email related to login time. A good approach is to initially set this threshold to zero seconds, perform some tests to see what your login time averages are, and then set the threshold based on those averages to something you think would indicate a significant login time delay at a later point. Note that if for any reason Remote Desktop Canary cannot log into the environment, such in the event of a login failure or other connection error, you will always be notified. If you haven't already at this point, Build your email server connection parameters so Remote Desktop Canary can send alerts to you via email. Use the test button to verify that you can send emails successfully through the mail server settings you have supplied. Once you've defined a workflow, you can go to the Run Test menu and select the Test Current Workflow Once menu item to have Remote Desktop Canary perform the login test you've defined in that workflow. You should see the Remote Desktop Canary RDP client connect to your environment. Immediately afterwards, you should receive an email containing information about the time it took to reach the gateway, connection broker, and or session host servers during the connection sequence. If you don't receive an email, you may have set the seconds threshold too high. Remember, set it to zero initially until you get data about how long logins typically take in your environment. Then go back in and change that threshold in your workflow later so you only get alerts when logins take what you consider to be an excessive amount of time.
Configuring an external test that goes through the gateway is exactly the same as configuring a local test, the only difference being that you need to make sure that your gateway server is specified. If you want to test a remote app, check the appropriate text box and supply the full path to the program on your terminal server. Remote Desktop Canary will attempt to connect to the server or collection and then launch that program. Finally, if you want to test connections to a standalone terminal server, simply supply its IP address or fully qualified domain name and make sure the Connect to Server option is selected. If your server uses a non-standard port other than 3389, add a colon and the port number after the server name.